Hi. Two things straight up. It is game day. It was game day. Um, so that's this. And we won. Go birds. Let's fucking go. Saquon Barkley. Let's go. Woohoo. Yeah. Okay. And uh, second is I forgot to rinse the conditioner out of my hair. So we have this situation. We're just going to ignore it. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of time between the first game of game day and the second game, which is at 8 p.m. Chiefs. My teams are the Eagles and the Chiefs. I also think the Saints are really good. The Ravens are really good. Um, but I'm a Chiefs Eagles fan. So I felt the reading coming through and here we are. Tomorrow is the beginning, is the start of Libra season. Go Libras. Happy last day to all the Virgos. This is the key K-E-I Tarot Love deck. I don't have the box in here with me. Oh, we're starting with this. Strength. It's funny because that's what the last one, strength was prominent in the last reading, right? It was the Thoth deck. Likes us, no one likes us, we don't care. That's my neighbors. We fucking Philly, no one likes us, we don't care. E A G L E S, Eagles! <gasps> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was finally safe to record because, um, they play music really loud and I have the windows closed and I get copyrighted for it on YouTube and they stop. So, okay. Strength card. That's a test of will and discipline and faith. It feels good though. It feels like transcending. Alchemizing. The Eight of Wands is on the bottom. Here we go with the copywriting again. The Nine of Swords. So this is pretty serious for whoever this is resonating with. So this strength card, look how different they are. This is what the overall energy is, right? But this is the energy that you're dealing with. It's still present on some level and it's the kind of stress where you can't sleep at night and you're doing, you're, maybe you're overeating, you're eating, you're in emotionally eating is what I mean by overeating. Cause it might not be overeating. It just might be emotionally motivated eating. It's like the stress level that you're at or the, the, what it really is, is it's the stress level. But what the core of that is, is you're stressed because you're misaligned. So the level of that, I lost where I was going. You might not realize how stressed you are. You might be putting it in a different category. You might be, I keep hearing distraction, distraction, distraction. You might be distracting yourself and you're aware of it, but you're not recognizing.
the toll it's taking. It's taking like an equal toll to things that you would categorize as more stressful, maybe immediately. So I guess what I'm picking up on is there's some level of personal disillusionment I'm going to say that because you know on you know on a deep level what's real. You might not recognize but like you know that your nervous system is dysregulated and it's like this, it's not smooth. You know that. Well, we all know that and we there's so many of when we know that but we keep moving anyway and this is a a wake up call. That's what I'm hearing. To not do that. That you're doing that so you cannot do that. I'm hearing you you don't you don't know how much time you're gonna save yourself if you recognize it from the misalignment and you do, and you address it immediately. How much future stress and un, it's unnecessary and you're gonna save yourself from it. The Eight of Cups. The Eight of Wands is on the bottom first and now the Eight of Cups. Well, whatever it is, it's something that it's got to go to an inner child wound, like a child wound. It's about some kind of abandonment. There's grief from some kind of abandonment at your core that was, that was emotionally, it, 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 it broke your heart on some level and it feels like it was way back. It might be before you can cognitively remember, but your body remembers. And you're not shit out of luck. You can do things about that when your body remembers stuff still and your mind doesn't and you can still heal it. Part of how you do that is fully, is taking the best care of you possible. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get a hundred across the board. You just have to do better today than you did yesterday. And then do better tomorrow than you did today. Just pick one thing and start from there and add on, you know. Whatever this is, it's a, it's a strong, it's like, I've, a final test, it's never gonna be an end game final test, but for a certain subject, you will get there. And it feels like for whatever this is, the core of this issue that is rearing itself, it's the, it's significant. You're gonna make a hump, like it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna, it doesn't feel like it's gonna be an issue anymore. The core reason. <sighs> what? The Knight of Swords. Gemini. Some people say Aquarius, but I, it's most, so I want to say that just because some people do say Aquarius, but it's Gemini. I believe it to be Gemini. It's a sweet night. It's a kind of sad night. It's a, it's a peaceful. It's like the night that's coming to battle and gets there with the enemy. And the aura of that night is so light that nobody attacks, everybody pauses because they want to hear what he has to say. And so he's presenting a truth, a truth and giving a choice. It's like the burden of knowing, of knowing and having to 
having to follow through with the fair choice as the result of the knowing. So maybe it's sharing information in a situation where you wouldn't really want to or whatever, but there feel it feels like a burden and it feels like that of like, you can't move not in the truth and you can't move not in fairness. When you do, when you go opposite that, everything gets fucked up. I thought I was, ooh, whoa. <laughs> this is so, oh my God. <laughs> Thought deck, Jesus Christ. The two of wands, <laughs> dominion. I can feel that. <gasps> Woo, right in my root chakra. Right there, root sh sacral. Jesus. What I, I don't know. I feel like I should say thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know. Wow. I still feel it. Fire, fire, fire. The princess of wands and princesses are knights, right? Isn't that? I forget what they are in the Thoth deck. Knights. They're knights. Sagittarius. Well, this is a strong desire to burst forward to just stay in the vibe there's a vibe you're feeling a vibe and you want to just get in the vibe and stay there <laughs> there it's it feels like with abandon like you're gonna like you traditionally abandon yourself and you just go you almost vaporize your essence. You go into essence instead of keeping roots. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Mm. Well, it's definitely connected <clears throat> to the string. Excuse me. <coughs> Just fucking... Well, I believe I forgot to wash it. It feels so. I'm like, why? Why? Okay. Maybe my lymph is uh, stagnant a little. It's inflamed. So if I'm feeling this, you guys are feeling this too. You're dysregulated in ways it's showing up physically, probably low level, but like you can feel it. So this is your, Hey, let's catch it now. We've gone a little too far outside of our, whatever. Don't mind me giving myself a lymphatic dream. To just as the reading is coming through. But this is your like, Hey, let's address this. It's happening to me in real time, so you can see it. Okay, go birds. All right. Um, ooh. And three of cups. And the prince of cups. I think princes are kings in this one. Because princesses our nights. Well, either way, this is the same. I think it's the king. Um,
the nine of cups is under the three of cups. I think that happened the other day, the other reading, the one, the most recent one, I think before this. I love that. That's like coming together with other people who are taking care of themselves on equal levels to where you are and then having the ability when you come together to lift all of you even higher up. That's underlying this. And if that's what you are pulled to, allow it. Don't forget your center. Don't forget your humanness. You have to keep that centered. You have to move from there. You don't just go to the head and go to the disassociation or go to the whatever coping mechanism. You put a root in first and then you let yourself enjoy. Like, so we're saying, to, let's say it's the positive, not the coping mechanism, but to the high feeling that is in alignment. You don't just go to it. You have to have the core first. You have to have an anchor. You have to. You got to be clever about what that anchor is. Not everyone deserves your sacredness. Feel me? Just meditate on that. Some things we all well, have to find out honors. That's as far as the prompt can go. If anybody's frustrated by that, you're really close to getting your answer. And you won't feel slighted when you get it. And you'll learn how to recognize when it's coming through because you'll recognize knowing it and what it felt like when you knew it. And then you remember it, that in your body so that it brings it up automatic for you, like on default, you know, there's so much intel coming in under the King of Cups is the Ace of Swords. So there's so much, look at this. Right in the center of the light. This is calling for strength to stand up, to come forward in your 3D human self as your king. And how to not be afraid of This is what it it might be you're not a And how to say this. There's a physical sensation you get that turns into an emotional feeling and it, the physical sensation is coming from a frequency you're picking up. That part you might not be aware of exactly, but that's what it is. And it's, it's, it's tied outside of you to a person, to a person, to music, to something like that. You, it feels immediately amazing because it's it's regulating your nervous system. It's something harmonious to you, right? You just are drawn to it and you want it and you want to be in it. You have had in the past situ situations where that didn't work out for you. You got lost in it. You, whatever, you mistook it. I don't know. There's things that happened that became out of alignment. So you doubt it. When you feel that, it might be scaring you. But this is saying there's if there's if one thing exists the equal opposite exists so if that kind of can exist in chaos misalignment etc harmony peace love also exists you can you just have to find it 
and that you have to, each of us have to find it for ourselves. And the connection here is the thing that you're battling right now is your mind, that nine of swords. Look at all that black stagnancy. But look at what's like trying so hard. It's in there, it's contained in there. And look here, this was the overall, it's alchemizing, right? You can still feel that like the process, the battle, but it doesn't feel heavy. It feels like an understanding is there, like it's controlled. Do you know what, it might be not the best use of the words. Intentional and it's a, uh, there's a level of understanding. And it's to come with and with unconditional love because you have it for yourself first, right? It's un you're going to understand that differently than you ever have before. What unconditional love actually means? What's examples of it? You've seen it. So all of you watching this, either have been it for someone else, or you're all involved in it in some way. There's both sides in the mirror watching this. Okay. Openness. Openness. Alertness. Rootedness. Empoweredness. That's my brother texting me because um, he came over to watch the Eagles game and then he left. So that was a 1 p.m. game. He left and he's coming back to watch the Chiefs game because now he watches the Chiefs. He likes football, but he watches the Chiefs with me because I watch the Chiefs. You know, so it's so cute and it's fun. I'm starting to really like football. It's such a complicated game. It's so fun. Okay, this is, what's this, the white witch, the white light oracle. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, I feel like singing, not in here. Maybe I'll play the ukulele. Number 29, which is 11. Beatitude of sacred rapture. Beatitude of sacred rapture. All these cards today are worth looking at. If you can look at the screen, they're worth it. Nine, Dakini of Infinite Light. I feel like I just got this the other day. I guess that doesn't really help. Okay. Let's do our homegirl first, 29. I'm gonna get fucking copyrighted for this. I don't know what to do about it. I could do my reading in my tarot room, but I wanna do them in here right now, so. Okay, give me a momento. Let your true self be seen. Search for the deeper spiritual purpose and opportunity for healing beneath conflict and suffering. 
if one exists, one reality re exists and it's chaos, then another exists too, right? The opportunity. If you have been in pain, this oracle brings a message of a joyful breakthrough. Your soul is growing stronger. Wow, I really feel like that's this white represented in the strength card. It's interesting to think about. Like it's a reflection, light body, 3D body, mortal body. You're able to have, more able to have faith and wisdom than in judgment or doubt. Commit to your spiritual path, the strength card, yeah? And know you are making progress even if things seem more difficult for a time. Even if you're using, like, distraction methods, you're catching yourself quicker. So be kind to yourself. Look how far you've come. There, you can still go further, and you will every time. There's no pressure on it. No pressure. Just do, just be kind to yourself every day. <laughs> And be kind to yourself when you catch yourself being unkind. And just try to do better the next day for yourself. Right? Know that any difficulty is part of your healing. And you will successfully move through it. Trust yourself. Okay. Okay, so the first paragraph, there's a lot, so I'm trying to summarize, is about understanding your own perception that you are a light body in a human body. It's not some woo-woo, hoo-hoo, outside of you idea, concept. It's true. It's real. And it's understanding that and, un and integrating it first. And how about when you make that part of your life, your everyday, your belief system, you don't fall for ego so quickly or easily or at all because you're the light. And you know that. And it's about expanding, then having the feeling, the need to expand it, to share it. When we are beheld, the need to behold arises. We need to bear witness to the sacred to acknowledge what is true. There's quantum power and pure vision. It empowers the viewer and also that which is viewed. Seeing from a position of inner spiritual truth, we look below the surface, which has alchemical potency to set healing in motion. What vision of yourself or others do you either cling to or free yourself from? How might your choice either encourage or impede your soul awakening? Those are good places to start. Start there. Rapture is a state of intensely pleasurable joy that lifts one into communion with the sublime and the sacred communion. I'm only having sex if it's part of a communion. That's one thing I know. That That's foundational and you can't fake that. 
like that, that's a good example of understanding the light in yourself and keeping your anchor in. Because when that trust is established and that communion can happen and a covenant is taken, you can let go into that. You feel me? So all of you watching this, this is relevant in your life in some way where it's about to be, but there's something that you've, you've tasted and it felt really good and it was a good, good, but there's been a pause on it, right? Come in connecting from the other readings before this. And there still is because the, the overall energy is the strength card, which is when you're in the process of something, there's still a battle happening. There's still, the process is still ongoing. So it's, you're not there yet. Like the eight of cups, the nine of cups, you're there. It's all about just fortifying your highest vibrational person, good energy and continuing to show up in the world as it, I need more space, hold on. Okay. <sighs> Rapture is the astonishment, the sudden intake of breath in response to an inner realization of something beautiful and beyond description. May all of you have rapture in your lives on a regular basis that is the happiest and healthiest and in alignment with your highest vibrational good. The darkness is cleared in an instant. A beatitude is a blessing, the highest blessing. The Oracle of Beatitude of Sacred Rapture brings guidance that the beautiful healing truth of spirit is your reality. When you sense spirit at work in your life, totally trustworthy and having your back, you are seeing clearly. When your hopeful heart feels empowered, empowered, you are in a zone of truth. Sorry. Trust in those moments. Recall them whenever you can. That's the strength card. That's the fuel for you. You, re you recall those moments and the energy of what it felt like or the where it is in your body. And that becomes a little push of fuel for you. We have to take active an active part in our alignment, but it it becomes easier every single time you do stuff. And when you realize a lot of it isn't like you introducing this, it's you're remembering what you already knew and we all were untaught it and unlearned it. But when you knew all this and when we were little tiny peanuts. So I can't wait to be a grandma. Cause I get the chance to do it much better than I did it with my own kids because I'm not the same me and I know so much more and have a lifetime of experience. And so I can help my grandbabies. They don't have to be biologically mine either. Do you know what I mean? My one kid wants to adopt. I might not ever have biological grandkids. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter in either way because I will help be able to see that baby and I know all the things that I did wrong to my own children good intentioned or not whatever and I can help my kids heal too do you know what I'm saying it's like they'll it, it's all whatever you understand what I'm saying right
I hope I hope I get to experience that. I really love kids, Lou. I love kids. Well, I love, no, I don't love all, no. I'm really, I know what it is. I just figured it out. It's because it's the purest form of their light. They're in the closest to their light body when they're, when you're first born. And I am a lot of light. So. I am Sophia, right? Where are my other Sophias? Let me know in the comments because I know there are other Magdalene sisters out there. Okay. There's a healing process. Let's look at it. Oh, it's, well, that's okay. Stop it. So the one after this is actually underneath the bottom one. So I might look at it, but I don't want this to be like forever ever's, but it's just bizarre that that is the next one after this and it's the one underneath. So I feel like I should probably skim it. All right, hold on. Become present and connect with your heart in a restful, respectful manner. You may do this by lightly resting your hand over your heart and feeling for its presence beneath your hand. Not only as a marvelous physical organ, but also as a spiritual temple of love. As you exhale, your awareness can drop from your head to your heart, as you inhale, your awareness can retreat a little more from the appearance of the outer world and feel pulled lovingly and gently toward the inner magnetic field of the heart. Within the heart, you can see, feel, and become aware of a beautiful eye. I'm never, these don't ever work for me. Visualizations, they don't work. It is an eye of light, an eye of protection, an eye of wisdom and non-judgment of clear vision and spiritual sight. It's not a clinical eye which assesses. It is a compassionate eye which sees the luminous inner reality of the soul and the sacred destiny of all beings. You're like third eye, right? The trappings of opinion and preconceived ideas are like the nets of fishermen. The ocean of love within the heart glides right through them. In the heart, there is wisdom and love. There is healing. There is truth and courage. The same love wisdom is in the hearts of all beings. You can imagine it gently stirring, awakening, bringing peace, making the connection between all beings more conscious. We are not alone. We matter to each other at a deep spiritual level. It's absolutely true. With every energy of everything that exists. Come on. It's a lot. Think about this. Let yourself rest beneath the appearances of conflict and separation and pain. Partake of the sacred heart tonic of all-embracing, all-encompassing love. When you are ready to complete your healing process, slowly emerge by focusing on the sensations of the air or clothing upon your skin. Ground and hydrate yourself. You have completed your healing process. Okay, so the vulva of cedar, cedar, cedar which is underneath. It's about your inner spiritual power can heal circumstances in your life and our world in ways greater than you realize. Journey within to gain clarity and conscious redirection of your inner energies toward what you wish to manifest. 
Do not try to control what is happening. Instead, work to bring positive influence to bear so that you may contribute constructively towards shaping the outcome for the greatest good. It's Scandinavian. And it's a practice of cracking open an egg in order to read and shape the future. The egg is a symbol of infinite divine potential and the beginning of new life. It feels like that. It feels like this is like everybody's new life, like a rebirth is happening on all different levels. For some of you, it's just going to be like actually deciding to like have a family or, or you're, you're, you're having a family or it's every ass it's every level of it but that's in there for some of you that's like present cedar is a mysterious soothsaying or visionary practice which also involves shamanic healing to divine an appropriate pathway through times of trouble and communal strife through prayer, chant, and binding magic, as well as visionary practices in an altered state, all of which are supported sweats, right? That's what I keep hearing. Oh, but not that's not the only thing, but I hear it. A powerful healing takes place. Focused, supported by focused collective intention. The Three of Cups, literally that, right? So this is a reminder to be aware of when your ego enters the chat and what that looks like and, and how to feel its presence and how, what tactics you can take to immediately thwart it. Redirect back to the light and back to your center. This is also maybe like a, like, for any, this is about your tribe and coming together with members of your tribe or just you and one other person and making the third thing. You know what I mean? But it, it's about that. It's about a co-creation right now. And it's definitely at least two, but definitely it's also for some of you, three. It's gonna be literal three or two and creating a three. You feel me? on all the different levels of how that can manifest. The patron goddess of cedar is Freya, the Norse goddess, with an insatiable appetite for pleasure, life, sensuality, the finer things, and unconditional freedom to be as she chooses. She's also a goddess of war. She is not afraid to enter into battle nor love. Mm, not afraid to enter into battle or love. Whew. Wow. That's, I love that. The art of cedar is one of collective dreaming and doing. It is the ability to move in darkness, to become wise to our own potential, to become manipulative, controlling, and therefore negative, and to outsmart that by consciously choosing to bring love, freedom, spiritness, and passion, the, hall the hallmarks of our presiding sorceress Freya into our lives. The message of this oracle is that you are able to bring a positive influence into whatever situations or circumstances in, unfold in your life. Dedicate yourself to goodness, integrity. Move from integrity. Let that be your anchor. Let that be your grounded. Even when you feel the pleasure, pleasure, say, what? where's my integrity? Something, whatever that is for you, that is your root cause like the root truth that will keep you rooted in the truth of you and it's just one word or phrase or something you feel me you, this is about further fortifying your strongest self 
Believe in your power to affect positive change. I mean, that was fucking fresh and cool. I'm going to look at the Dakini of Infinite Light and then we're going to wrap it up. Wrap it up. No, light me up. Go ahead and light me up. What song is that? They're burning the witches, even if you are one. There are rules and reasons they're burning. It's Taylor. Is it Don't Blame Me? I don't know. Whatever. Maybe look that up. Okay, Dakini, Dakini of Infinite Light. Seek and you shall find, find the teachers and teachings which feel pure to your heart. But remember, it is the inner truth of you that will ultimately set you free. Do not give your power away, but do trust in a greater guiding wisdom at work in all aspects of your life. Oh yeah, it's just, it's going with what we just said about it rooted in integrity, like knowing that you are light. When you know that you are light, you have a reverence for all because you understand the deeper, it, you know, you it's the connections made. A Dakini is a supernatural feminine being who inspires spiritual practice, guides one to actualize Siddhis, Siddhis, S-I-D-D-H-I-S, or spiritual abilities, and teaches the inner path of awakening. Okay. When she appears in a reading, travel your path and explore your questions about spirituality and awakening with confidence for much progress can be made as you do so. So understand that you, you already know this information. You're just asking to remember it. You feel me? Some Dakinis are fully enlightened whilst others are still in their process of awakening. Truly enlightened beings have the ability and desire to assist all other beings to enlightenment. Okay. So this is about the Dakini of Infinite Light, Marichi, M A. M-A-R-I-C-I, Mariki, Marichi. She's connected with the rays of light from the sun. She is sovereign over all lesser beings. Her many gifts include the capacity to guide one into enlightenment, to heal and repair that which has been separated or broken and to provide protection during vulnerable transitions. She brings light on all levels. We need light to see clearly. This is just as true on emotional and psychological levels as it is on the physical. Light helps us see what is happening rather than making assumptions. There's an increase of light in your life. That could be it too, that this is the strength card. You've been, you've been, and it, you've, 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 you have an increase of light in your life and it's inviting you. You're welcomed. You know that you vibe with it. And maybe this is the strength of you connecting in communion with it. And it's calling to like show up in your king form. Men, men, masculine or feminine biology we're not talking about that show up in your active the places where you weren't using your voice where there needed to be action and you from you and you didn't do it or your actions caused something that's your masculine side addressing it taking accountability on your own unprompted fully in a and doing it with that king of cups energy an open heart but a, but a rooted soul. Her appearance signifies sacred victory. OK. 
Okay, so there's your mantra, you can say. Oh boy. It says seven times. Om Marit Se Mum Swaha. You can screenshot it. I'll give you the other part of it. Okay. So this is just about you're on the right track. Hopefully this helped solidify where you are. And this might have been the thing to come in and help you get out of whatever the distraction method you might have been in or whatever doubt you're having that the strength card showed up. Um, and a reminder to show yourself grace because you are grace because you are from the light. Oh, God, these want to be abused. <sighs> very soon clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now that's what i'm calling the reading there you go okay bitches ciao ciao see you next time